A perfume for some people is like love at first sight or a long love story. From the outset, it envelops us, seduces us, and whoever wears it wants it only for him or her. It's a special story, a story of intimacy and individuality. There's the scent we receive and the one we offer, or the one we are offered. There's always a bit of nostalgia in the fragrance, and often the memory of a loved one, or even a touch of magic. Its fragrance varies on the skin. On you, it will neither be completely the same nor completely different. And behind its wake, the whole nature of its creation, armfuls of flowers from grass or elsewhere. Woods, leathers, vanilla and musk, black pepper and cloves, or synthetic essences which perfectly reproduce fresh and crystalline scents. Not to mention the fruity waters based on yuzu, lime, bergamot or orange. Far from the standardized fragrances designed to please the largest amount of people, each and every one searches for their own fragrance and may well find this unique fragrance in the Garden of Scents designed by the House of Nikolai, because here it is characterful perfumes that are created. At Nikolai Parfumeur Créateur, these are works of art, born more from the perfumer's inspiration for exceptional fragrances than from consumer demand. Nicolai Parfumeur Créateur is a house which was founded in 1989 by my parents. The idea at the start was based on Patricia, my mother, who's from a perfumer family, since in fact she's the direct descendant of Pierre-François Pascal Guerlain, the founder of the House of Guerlain. And she's always grown up in this scented universe of perfumes. And when she was young, a student, she wanted to study chemistry to eventually become a perfumer one day. What's been very important in the development of the business is that it's really a story of a couple. My father, Jean-Louis Michaud, was the founder, and without him, nothing would have been possible. The house had a development strategy which was specific to us, like many things at Nicolai. At the start, my father wanted to set up a house of perfumes, that is to say, to have a laboratory, a factory and a shop. What's more, in the first years, the store was on Avenue Raymond Poincaré. It was the original store. That is to say that we even did the manufacturing in the back. There was Patricia's perfume organ and the fillers in the basement. After a few years, we found a site which is in La Ferté Saint-Aubin, near Orléans, in the heart of the Cosmetics Valley, where we have 5,000 square meters of land. We have a warehouse that is 1,600 square meters, and we have a real manufacturing site. Today, we have 10 people working full-time there, and we have a large production capacity. The commercial strategy was initially to set up shops to first make a name for ourselves in Paris, because we consider that Paris is the capital of perfumes, perhaps the world capital of perfumes. So we thought that being known and recognized in Paris was a good thing to start off. And before going on to conquer the export markets, my father set up the stores one after the other, and today we have seven stores in Paris. He also set up two in London. But what's more important with the Parisian shops is that we are the brand of perfumes with the most self-owned points of sale in Paris. So we really have a name and a reputation. The first difficulty was to gain credibility, to install the brand name in people's minds and to gain public trust over time to be recognized as a typically French and Parisian brand, all with a broad olfactory spectrum created by Patricia in her own laboratory in order to seduce every client with their tastes and their particularities. It's true that having our own laboratory, buying the raw materials ourselves, and having our own nose, these three elements inevitably mean we have fragrances that stand out from the crowd in an olfactory way. The goal is that when you come to a Nikolai store, it is to discover fragrances that surprise you, that remind you of something that you have never really felt elsewhere. And that is really what puts us on a different level. And it is a perfume with the name that echoes the chic of Fifth Avenue which transcribes the fascination of designer Patricia de Nicolai for the city that never sleeps, which began its history in 1989. New York, with its notes of bergamot, lavender, cinnamon, vanilla and musk. Another bestseller, Patchouli Intense, seduces French, European and Middle Eastern customers, which is extremely rare with its lavender geranium harmony. 
I created it in 2008 to 2009. So you see, we started in 1989. It takes time, but before that one, there was another perfume that really helped the brand. It's a perfume for the house, an ambiance fragrance called Maharaja, and which is still our bestseller, which has a very powerful oriental note, patchouli, sandalwood, a little vanilla, and spices. After purchasing natural raw materials from wholesalers in Grass, which is a whole profession in itself, requiring specific knowledge and allows flexibility and freedom of creation at the heart of the Nikolai house, the real work of the fragrance artist begins. Teamwork and discipline, as the French master perfumer Edmund Rudnitska already pointed out in the last century at Dior. La création Creation is a discipline, and it's not me who said that. I was happy to read it. It was Mr. Rudnitska, who did a lot for advancing and getting our profession recognized. He said it. You have to work every day, every day, and I work every morning. Every morning, I smell, because the nose is fresh and ready. We tire quickly during the day, so this olfactory work is done with my assistants. We write the formulas, we weigh them, we re-smell them, and I work like that until 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It is now that we can speak of top and heart notes, backgrounds and blotters. More volatile and often fresher, the top notes appear when the perfume is vaporized while the heart notes, more flowery, more spicy or fruity, last between two and 10 hours and constitute the character of the perfume, without forgetting the backgrounds, more woody or leathery, whose notes evaporate more slowly, over several days for the most stubborn and prolong the fragrance over time. In the morning, we often smell the background notes. That is to say, they were dipped the day before. So you can smell the fragrance. We re-smell the top notes. All that is done in the morning. You have to do this very regularly. There are times when we are a little more rushed. We have more things to work on. There are times when we are much more relaxed, when we have more time. That's when we say, well, we said that we should work on an incense, myrrh and labdanum mix. Why don't we do it now? In moments of calm, we try to do fewer things, more adventurous, to go in search of finding new creations. Creations that take six months to a year, or even two years for some of them. Patricia de Nicolai never leaves a blank page. With more than 30 years of experience since the founding of her house and part of her career working for large group companies before, she has worked on so many incomplete mixes and formulas that she immediately knows what she can pursue when she embarks on the creation of a new perfume. The important thing is to work on several projects at the same time, so as not to become overwhelmed, and above all, to have the time to develop as many innovative and unique fragrances as possible. Hindsight is a necessary luxury. We are a little lost in a formula. We're not chemists who say, let's mix aldehyde with alcohol. That should give us this or that result. No, it's really empirical. We know that by mixing this with that, it will give that. But a formula that is a bit long and complex, you have to know how to clarify it and simplify it. That too is a job we do. At a certain level, we say to ourselves, we're going to examine everything because we are working with heart notes and base notes to weigh it faster. So we open the formula. We really examine it. Here, I have an H base. They must have taken it from me, this base. The base is there. It does this and that. We try this, do that. We put it together. We open it and then we say to ourselves, but there are ingredients that overlap. It is useless to have too many things. Let's simplify it. And we do this work fairly regularly. From time to time, we ask ourselves, we like this, yes, but when you open everything up, it really gives a lot. And then there is this and that, which is too much. The main mix comes from that. So let's focus there. It's technical here, but it's important. Jean-Claude Elena will tell you, you have to work with as few ingredients as possible. It's true, we understand better what's going on, but it's also harder to say to myself, I'm going to make a perfume with 15 products. The atmosphere, yes, I do it with 15 products. The fragrance to wear, it's longer. There are longer formulas that can have 25 to 30 products, and even formulas like that, they are not long formulas, because I know that I have colleagues who make much longer formulas. There are perfumes on the market, very well known, that we know have very long formulas. But there are no rules. Personally, I try to go for simple. To become a perfumer, it takes time, passion and patience. A profession that develops over years, with the love of an art that alternates between periods of doubt and constant trial and error. Reworking, persisting, understanding why mixes don't work, 
with a palette of 200 to 300 ingredients. It often takes a lifetime to create your masterpiece. Even at the end of our life, we still haven't discovered everything, done everything, and it's a profession that we can do. Edmund Runitska, the great grand master of perfumery of the 20th century, he created his Diorella, which is really for me one of the most beautiful perfumes. At the end of his life, it's a long journey. It's a work that comes to fruition after years of research on a blend of jasmine, oak moss, and cypress. He made the Eau de Hermes, the Eau de Dior, he made the Eau Sauvage, and then he arrived at this Diorella. He was 70 years old, 72 years old. So you see, it's really a long-term job and a quest, a quest to go towards the beautiful, towards the magnificent, towards the... We can almost speak of a work of art. I take care of the Osmotech, which is a conservatory of perfumes. We have a lot in this collection of perfumes. We have over 4,000 of them. Obviously, not all of them are masterpieces, but there are some that prove that our profession is an artistic profession and that we are truly artists in our own right. Artists who must always go further at the risk of disagreement. While a perfume brings something new to creation, all the aromas do not necessarily blend well. Il faut savoir en jouer de ça. You have to know how to play it, because there can be a disharmony, something that won't work. But everything is in proportion and in doses. Sometimes you can just wake up in agreement, because it is two or three ingredients that meet together and they create a strong smell. If you work the ingredients by saying, well, this doesn't work, but let's be careful. Maybe I have the wrong dosage. Then we can maybe find a voice here. Indeed, for me, there are notes that I don't like to mix, lavender and violet. That makes me feel sick, but I know there are perfumes that are made like that. There are very sweet gourmet notes today in the so-called selective perfumery, which I avoid as much as possible. There are ingredients, raw materials, that I hardly use, because I know they are very widely used in the selective perfumery, like dehydromyrsamol and coumarin. And I think that's how an olfactory signature is created unconsciously, if you will. Today, some perfumers only claim to use natural raw materials, suggesting a lack of nobility among synthetic products. It's a pointless battle. There's a bit of a conspiracy currently on the topic. At the same time, if we dig into the subject, with the problem of allergens and slightly delicate materials, natural products are even more difficult to work with than synthetics. Synthesis is a molecule. We studied the molecule. If it's bad, we don't use it. We're forbidden. If it's good, we use it. In the natural arena, an essence, a natural essential oil, is a multitude of molecules. In this multitude of molecules, you always have two or three that are allergenic, so it's much more difficult to say, ah, we're going to work 100% natural, and people are happy. It's 100% natural, but they don't realize that natural is more allergenic than synthetic. So there's a whole education to be learned on the subject. And I always rely on both, because modern perfumery was created thanks to the discovery of synthetic products, which allowed it to go much further than what nature can give us, and even to go to the abstract. All this happened at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, and this break, which was made thanks to the contribution of these synthetic products and discovery of chemistry and the advance of science, allowed allowed our perfumer creator profession to explode. Without all these discoveries, we would still be at the age of Marie Antoinette's perfumery, or even before. So to deny this discovery, to deny modernity, the advance that we have been able to make in this area, well, it's denying our job. Modernity and quality of raw materials in simple but pretty 30 milliliter bottles that are easy to take with you. Another particularity of Nicolai perfumes among containers of 100 milliliters and more at around 200 euros. In this house, which has at its heart the art of perfume, if they don't advertise, it's because everything is reinvested into the raw materials used for the juices, for a unique olfactory identity. The definition of a great perfume is that, above all, it should create memories. It's the one that settles in over time. It's the perfume that will mark generations, that many people will have worn, that will even remind us of someone forgotten. 
because the perfume still exists, while the person is no longer around. A fragrance that settles in over time and that has marked a significant number of people is a great fragrance. It's bound to be a great scent. Some are beautiful perfumes, but didn't get the chance to settle in over the long term and didn't get to be worn a lot or sold a lot because they weren't supported with adequate marketing, or it's by a brand that didn't have the means. So there are masterpieces that get lost, that's for sure. The feeling that I have for the perfume is pleasant, elegant, not disgusting, not heady, not shocking. These are some of my guidelines, if you will, when I create perfumes. There are periods when you hang on to raw materials which suddenly reveal facets that you had not yet seen, or you fall in love, a bit like a designer who wants to work with silk or linen or different fabrics all at once. In perfumery, it's a bit like that too. We get interested in a raw material. I had a period when I loved the essence of cedar, Virginia cedar, which smells a bit like a pencil sharpener or a sawmill when you enter into a sawmill. I created an atmosphere scent for the brand called La Route de Cedre. I worked on this note for a long time. Then there was patchouli, which interested me a lot. And patchouli has become an ambiance note called Kathmandu. And this scent that I made with this Kathmandu candle, it was so new, interesting, quite surprising and powerful. I said to myself, that can be made into a perfume. I started with a simpler formula, because ambiance fragrances are worked more quickly. We don't refine the top, heart and background notes. We need a very powerful scent that is revealed at once. From this formula, I created a body scent, and I made the patchouli intense. And then, there are some that are easier to work with than others. For example, I really like working with Rose. She goes everywhere, she places herself everywhere, and she embellishes everything. And I like to say sometimes that the perfumers from Grass, they are perfumers of Jasmine. They were raised, educated, they are from Grass. They were raised with this raw material. They work with Jasmine very well, and they make very beautiful Jasmine perfumes. Me, I have more trouble with Jasmine, but I love the rose. It's funny, but in essence, this question is interesting, and that's why from time to time we can find throughout a collection an olfactory signature. It comes from the perfumer's palette, that's for sure. Since 2014, when Axel de Nicolai joined the management, international doors have successfully opened. The Middle East, Asia and the United States have been won over by the heritage of this brand made in France. Pioneering, authentic, and confidential. Shops have opened in Dubai, Moscow, and Shanghai, with one key word, choice. In our range, we have more than 35 fragrances of perfumes and over 30 ambient fragrances for the home. Each fragrance is available in several sizes for perfumes and in several types for home fragrances, namely candles, room spray, scented bamboos, different diffusers. We also have oils and refills for catalytic lamps. All this means that we have more than 350 references in each store. So many perfumes that are sometimes reformulated over time because of the new standards decreed by the IFRA the International Fragrances Association. The fragrance will always be available to our customers, since we are fortunate to have our own laboratory. We can always recreate, remanufacture a fragrance at the request of a client, even a fragrance that was discontinued 10 years ago. Aside from the legal constraints on the ingredients, the IFRA standards for the ingredients, apart from that, you can always redo a fragrance, provided you buy at least three large bottles as a minimum. It was a chance to meet a unique performer who's followed by certain perfumery empires, which, with sumptuous marketing and muses, impose the trends, but recognize the talent of Patricia. 
We're here to beautify the person and reassure them. It has to be pleasant for the person who is going to put it on, but it has to be pleasant for the person next to them who is going to smell it. Because your perfume, very quickly, you no longer smell it. You put it on, it's an act of joy. In the morning, when you dress and put on your perfume. But we perfume ourselves for others. And others have to love you with this perfume. And this is also a dimension that I have in mind when I create a perfume. Sometimes I have moments in my life when I rediscover the scents worn by people, my creations, and they are moments of happiness. When it's worn by someone else and you have forgotten it for a while, you rediscover it, and that's a great emotion. Also, I have been complimented not only by my own customers at our boutique and Nikolai, but by colleagues in my profession. So when you have perfumers who lean towards you and say, what are you wearing? And they think it's very, very good, it's the best compliment I can get. And I had that for some of my perfumes. Behind these bottles with a refined design, also chosen in-house, and behind these handmade wax seals that adorn them, hides all the know-how developed through the luxury of time by these craftsmen of an art of the marvelous.